Okay, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, looks like everyone or a good majority are here, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thanks again for joining. This is the Running Start uh, new student orientation for fall quarter. Um, my name is Katie Foster. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Running Start manager here at North. Um, I probably met or worked with all of you or most of you at some point during the registration process. Um, so thank you again for joining uh, tonight as well. I um, just want to introduce the Running Start staff um, here. So of course, um, I work in the Running Start office. Um, and then um, we have another staff, um, a Running Start advisor with us. Um, her name is Adriana Rocha. And she will um, actually be starting with us in a couple of weeks um, in the Running Start office. Um, so. She is not able to be with us today, but I uh, wanted to include her um, because she'll definitely be somebody that you work with um, throughout your time here at, at Running Start. Um, a little bit about what Running Start advisors um, do. Um, so as you have probably experienced, we help with registration, um, can answer questions. Um, sorry, I'm just letting some more people in here. Just a second. Um, uh, help you throughout the application process. Um, we work with students um, each quarter, you know, you're not required to meet with us each quarter for registration, just your first um, quarter here, um, but we can help if any questions do come up. Um, just a moment. Just want to double check. Or... Let me stop sharing my screen because it seemed to... So black, hang on just one moment. Okay, we're back. So uh, we can continue to help with the registration um, as questions come up. If um, you're working on a degree at North, um, we can help with education planning, answering questions about transferring, um, and also help um, connect you to other resources on campus. So, um, you know, if you find that questions come up or you're needing help getting a hold of an instructor, anything like that. Um, our main goal is to work, um, just be, be a support for Running Start students, work just with you, make sure that you um, have what you need while you're at North with us. So a little bit about what we will um, cover today. Um, I'll start by talking about how to prepare um, for the first day of the quarter, um, things um, that you need to look up and double check since maybe the last time that we've met. We'll go over some of those resources um, that are available to you as a North student. Um, we'll go over some policies and procedures as well, things that are important for all students and especially Running Start students to know. Um, and then we'll just wrap up with a couple of reminders and next steps and how to get a hold of the Running Start office if anything, um, if you need any help in the next couple of days. Jumping right into starting the first day um, and preparing for your first day as a college student. Um, so one of the most important things is to know when the quarter starts. Um, so this coming Monday, September 23rd, is the first day of the quarter. Um, and in just a few minutes, I'll um, switch over to CTC Link and give a little demonstration about how to check some of these things um, that are important to be aware of because some of you may have just registered with me earlier today, uh, but some of we some of you met back in May, so it may have been um, quite a few months. So we want to get back into the swing of things, check and make sure that nothing's changed since um, you registered for your classes. Um, the quarter, as I said, starts with Monday. Um, not all of you may be coming to campus though on Monday. Um, you might have a class that only meets Tuesday, Thursday. You might have just an online class. So that's an important thing for you to check and be uh, positive about what your first day looks like. Are you going to be logging into class? Um, are you going to be uh, coming to campus? And then we also want to double check your schedule. As I mentioned, some of you may have met, registered. Sorry about that. Um, the background noise here. Um, some of you may have registered up to four months ago. Um, and so you know, while majority of the classes don't change, um, sometimes classes are canceled or they might have switched rooms or something. So we wanna make sure that you know um, exactly where you're supposed to be and feel confident um, come Monday. And then 
um, there's probably quite a few of you that are still on a wait list. Um, letting a few more people in. Um, and so we probably talked a little bit um, during the registration session about what the next steps are <clears throat> um, if you are on a wait list um, come this Monday. So I wanna just give a little reminder, um, a refresher about what to do. Um, so the wait list process right now is an automatic process. So if you're on a wait list, as students drop, you'll automatically move up that wait list and hopefully into the class. And that is an automatic process through next Tuesday, the second day of the quarter. Um, after next Tuesday, that wait list shuts off and is no longer an automatic process. So if you are still on a wait list next Tuesday and not fully enrolled in a class, that means that there's not, uh, you will not automatically move off of the wait list after that point. Um, it is still possible to get into the class though. You just need to reach out to the instructor and get instructor permission to enroll. That um, process is from the second day of the quarter, um, well, after the second day, all the way through the 10th day of the quarter. I don't necessarily recommend um, that students are joining classes up till the 10th day, that's the second week of the quarter, um, but technically that is the last day that you could um, join a class, again, with instructor permission. So if you are still on a wait list, um, you wanna be checking your schedule, checking your emails, monitor whether you're getting enrolled in that class over the next few days. And then um, come this Monday or Tuesday um, when that wait list is shutting off, um, we recommend that you either go to class those first couple of days if it's in um, an in-person class and you have an actual classroom to go to, um, or if it's an online or virtual class, you wanna email the instructor and let them know that you're on the wait list um, make sure to include your name, your CTC link ID number, um, and let them know that you're on the wait list, you're still interested in taking the class and see if um, there's space and see if you can get permission to enroll. There's still a lot of students that are gonna drop those first couple of days of the quarter. Um, and so there's um, a lot of movement those first couple of days and even within this last week. Um, so it is important to be in contact with the instructor, make sure to follow up with them, um, I say at least give 24 hours for them to respond because they are busy, they're getting lots of emails, um, but make sure that you are uh, reaching out and initiating that because the instructor is not going to you know, reach out to you to see if you want into the class. It's up to you to really kind of initiate that. So again, attend class, ask for the syllabus, um, you know, really show that you want to be in the class and then hopefully you can get a space in those first couple of days. Another reminder is to pay your class fees. Um, I know a lot of you already have paid your class fees, um, but there's quite a few of you that still owe um, for fall quarter. And so that's one thing, if you, even if you think you've paid them, just make sure when you log into C2C Link, check your financial account and see if you do have any class fees that are still there. Um, as you probably know, Running Start will pay the full tuition for your courses, um, but Running Start students are responsible for paying class fees. And those range anywhere from 20 to maybe $100 per class, depending on the class. Um, so um, if you've been getting emails that you have tuition due and you've been ignoring them because you think, I don't need to pay attention, I'm running start, please do log in and check your account because you probably have a small amount um, that's listed there. Um, and then you want to pay those by really as soon as possible. The deadline has passed, but definitely by the beginning of the quarter to get that taken care of. And I will show you in a few minutes where you can log in to do that in CTC link. <clears throat> if you have turned in a fee waiver, um, if you're eligible for free or reduced lunch at your high school, then those fees automatically should come off of the account. Still good to check just to make sure that everything looks correct. Um, but if you are eligible for free or reduced lunch, um, make sure that those fees are um, zeroed out and just contact the Running Start office if there's any error there. Another thing to um, start thinking about is textbooks. Um, we are in transition right now. Um, over the summer, we moved bookstores. And so some of you may have already logged in to check um, your textbooks. Um, I think as of today, the online bookstore is um, available. And it's a little bit different from previous quarters. Um, and so what you'll do is um, you'll look at your syllabus or your canvas, um, which I'll explain later on how to do that. But you'll look in your class materials 
to see what your instructor has listed um, as far as textbooks are required. They should give you um, an, either an ISBN number or list an author, a title, and an edition. Um, and then you can go to the bookstore, search for those books. Um, you can also purchase them outside of the North Bookstore if you prefer, you know, Amazon or an outside source there. Um, not all courses are going to require materials, and it really varies class by class and instructor by instructor on what those materials look like. Um, some have, you know, traditional textbooks that you'll purchase physically and um, have them shipped to you. A lot of them are moving to digital materials, so you might have an e-textbook or um, have an online you know, resource that you're logging into and doing classwork through there. And some have free material um, that they'll just provide to you. So it really ranges and you'll just need to check in with your instructor and with your um, specific class to see what those requirements are. Um, again, if you're eligible for free or reduced lunch at your high school, then you are eligible to borrow books through the Running Start Book Loan Program. Um, we are still finalizing some details on how you'll get your books, uh, but those will be provided by the Running Start office. And so keep an eye on your email because we'll send an email to eligible students and let you know how to pick those up. Um, basically, you'll need to contact the Running Start office, either coming in in person in those first two weeks or um, reaching out by email. Um, but Again, just keep an eye out in your email and we'll send you those exact um, details. Oh, and I did forget to mention um, that you all will get a copy of this uh, PowerPoint. And so a lot of these links here will take you, you know, directly to whatever resource or site that I'm talking about. Um, and so again, I'll demo it in a few minutes, but um, a lot you'll get this, get these links sent right to you as well. And then one of the last things to think about is transportation. Um, so if you have um, on-campus classes, how are you gonna be getting to North Seattle campus? We have a lot of different ways to get here. Um, if you plan to drive and park on campus, you will need to purchase a parking pass. Um, they are $50 per quarter. Um, <clears throat> parking is free the first two weeks. Um, so you will not get a ticket if you park on campus. Um, for those first two weeks, but they will start ticketing after that. So it's really important that you get um, your parking pass purchased. And then again, there's a link here that will take you right to um, the online site to do that. We're also on a number of bus routes um, and are directly across from the light rail station. Um, so that makes it pretty easy to get here in multiple ways. So I'm gonna pause right here for a moment and jump over to CTC Link and just give a little refresher about how, um, how and where to look for all of those things we talked about. Let's get out of here. Okay. So as many of you may remember, um, I like to start at northseattle.edu, so the main North Seattle homepage. And then when you come up here to the top and click the Students tab, it will bring you here to this page. <clears throat> Hopefully you're pretty familiar with this, or at least it looks vaguely familiar. Um, but this page here is gonna have links to most of the things that you will use as a student while you're at North. Um, so definitely spend some time on here, look around and see what you, you know, might need um, and what you have links to. But for right now, I'm going to um, have you, well, not click, but after this, um, before the quarter starts, you'll come in here and click the class schedule. Um, CTC link is also an option there, but um, as I probably mentioned, it's not quite as user friendly. So I always use this class schedule button. And then you can go to fall schedule. From here, you'll click on the bottom left a login screen, and this is where you log in with your CTC Link ID number and password. Um, as a reminder, your CTC Link is going to be a nine-digit number. It starts with 203, um, and the password you have created. Everyone's done this um, and has a login because this is where you registered for classes. Once you're logged in here, it'll bring you to the dashboard, and I am logged in as a fake student, so um, there's not as much here that as you'll probably see on your dashboard. Um, but just a few things to look through um, because 
Um, as you know, you can register for your classes here, but there's a lot of other information as well. So to double check your schedule, come over here to the um, left-hand side and click on the schedule button, which is the second one down. And it'll bring you here to this calendar view. Um, this big student here is not registered for fall quarter. And so there's nothing listed on this calendar, but you um, hopefully should see classes listed here. You can also come up to the top right and click on this button here for list view, and it'll um, list it out here in this other format. So it does break down the classes um, by day on what um, day the class is offered. And then if it's an online class, it's going to be listed at the top here under the other category. When you're looking at the schedule here, a um, couple of things to pay attention to. So we have um, your class name here on the left, the description, um, your instructor's name is listed here. Um, we have a start um, time and an end time. So these are going to be for either in-person classes or virtual classes that have a specific meeting time. Um, it has the dates of the quarter. Again, this is a fake student, so these dates are um, for a old summer quarter. Um, but it's important to pay attention to. Most of the classes will list September 23rd, but occasionally you'll get a late start class. Um, so make sure you pay attention to that. And then most importantly, look under this room column, because again, this is gonna tell you how your class is offered. And um, every single quarter I get questions that I'm in an online class, but I don't know when my class starts. So if you are in an online class, and it says online under the room column, there is not going to be a date. Uh, well, there will be a date. There's not going to be a time listed here uh, because there is no meeting time. Online classes are fully asynchronous courses. You are still expected to log in every day. Um, so you do want to log in this coming Monday, check your um, class page and get started on the work. But it doesn't matter if you're logging in at 8 a.m. or noon or 9 p.m. Um, there's no specific live lecture you have to attend. It's just at some point during the day, log into your class. Um, so that's the case for this online virtual classes here. Um, ignore this top one, but these virtual classes will have a time. And virtual means you'll be meeting on Zoom or some other video platform. And you will log in to Canvas, which I'll demonstrate it a little bit later, but you'll log into Canvas to access your class materials, and that's where you should find the Zoom link or instructions on how to join the class. For in-person classes, you'll see under the room here, NX stands for North Seattle, and then we'll list out the classroom that you're meeting in. So here we have AS 1532. Um, the, uh, the letters here will tell you which building. Um, so arts and, arts and sciences building for this particular class. And then it has the room number listed, 1532. The first number is going to tell you which uh, floor the class is in, so usually one, two, or three, and then the specific room number from there. And again, you can, even if you think you know where your class is, make sure to log in and double check that everything um, is still as you um, expect it to be and that there were no changes in the last few months. <clears throat> Some other things to take a look at in CTC Link. So once you check your schedule and everything looks good, again we want to double check um, your uh, your class fees. And so along the left hand side here in the middle, you'll see the financials tab, and then you'll click what I owe, <clears throat> and then you'll check here to see if you have a balance. It would be much much higher than you would ever owe. So um, Again, just double checking to see if there is any balance. You can make a payment over here on the top right, make a payment um, button, or you can come to campus if you prefer and pay at the cashier's office as well. Let's see, another thing to look at um, that you may need is under this enrollment tab, and then you click the drop classes. This, of course, does not have any um, classes listed, but you also you should be able to view all of your um, enrolled classes and waitlisted classes here under the drop classes. Um, and it's 
a good place to look if you don't like how the schedule was set out. It's another um, alternative to check your schedule. This will also show you where you're um, where you are on the wait list. And for those of you that are on wait lists and enrolled in backup classes, or if you just decide that a class is not going to fit in your schedule and you need to drop a class, this is where you would um, drop classes and make those adjustments. Um, oftentimes, you may have a running start hold on your account, which is put on your account after you have a final schedule. Um, that hold will prevent you from dropping any classes. And so in that case, you would need to reach out to the Running Start office to have the hold removed. Um, but once that hold is removed, then you'll just find the class on this page. Um, you do a little checkbox over on the right, and then you click, click the Drop Classes button at the top. Um, some other things. Um, I would just kind of explore CTC link. This is where you will come to check your final grades at the end of the quarter. You can access um, official, or excuse me, unofficial transcripts. Um, other things, if you're working on degrees, you can also update your preferred name and things like that, your email contact information, all of that can be done here um, in the profile area. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Up back here to the presentation. Uh, see, and I see a few things coming in in the chat. Um, I am, well, actually, I will check them right now. And we'll have plenty of time um, at the end to do questions and answer. And so I'm not going to go through all of the chats um, right now, <clears throat> but I'll just uh, take a peek as we go too. Um, okay, so a little bit of uh, some questions about asynchronous classes and how they work. Um, and so as I mentioned, there's no um, you know specific day or uh, day or time that you're having to join a live class meeting. Um, I generally recommend that students kind of set a, set some time aside each day, um, get in the habit of checking your class every day. Even if there's not a lot of work or if nothing's changed from day to day, um, you know, go in, check your announcements, see if the teacher posted anything. Um, you know, you still have homework and due dates and things that you have to work through. Um, but I find that the students that are most successful, you know, really schedule out that time for themselves, whether it's first thing in the morning or during a free period, whatever works well for you. Um, plan that time out for your online class and really get in the habit of checking every day. Sometimes you might spend longer, sometimes, you know, not as much. Um, and instructors can see where you've spent time in Canvas and they can see if you haven't logged in, you know, for a couple of weeks or a couple of days. Um, so just be aware of that, that instructors are checking on that um, and logging in more often, spending time in your class material um, generally leads to more success. Um, okay, I'm gonna get to a lot of these questions. So I'm gonna hold off and keep going. And then again, at the end of the presentation, I'll circle back and make sure everyone's questions are answered. <clears throat> so we've talked a little bit about um, things to do in the next few days before the quarter starts. Um, and so now I want to spend a little time talking about some of the resources that are available to all of you um, as North Seattle students. Um, we have a lot more resources than are listed here, but we do like to just highlight a few of them um, and show you a little bit about their web pages. <clears throat> so one of the um, most common things that students will use is the academic counselors. Um, so again, I'll send these out with a link. Um, they're also on our web page under the student services um, drop down. You'll find the links to most of these services as well. Um, but academic counselors um, are a little bit different than maybe you're used to with a high school counselor. Um, counseling services at North uh, can provide mental health counseling, but really focus on the academic um, side of things as well. So uh, Oftentimes, we'll have students who meet with our academic counselors to um, talk about time management skills, or if you're having a hard time adjusting and keeping up with college classes, they can really help um, work through some of those barriers or um, 
chest anxiety, things like that. Um, they're really, really great. Um, you know, really great welcoming people there. Um, if you've been into the Reading Start office in the same area, just on the other side um, of the hallway from me. Um, counseling is available to all students um, during the year. So they um, are not working during breaks, but um, starting on Monday, they will be back and meeting with students. And it's a free service for all students. Um, and so you can come to this page, get more information if you're curious about um, what they can help with. They also do a lot of um, career and major exploration. If you're kind of, you know, wondering what classes to take um, for certain areas or, you know, what, what might be a good fit with your personality um, for major down the road, they can help with all those things as well. Um, and then up here, if you um, are interested, they have an online counseling appointment request where you can come in here um, and again, submit a request and get that scheduled. And it's all, um, it's all confidential. Um, meeting with them, I'm happy to help refer you or get you connected if you need any help, but it is um, all confidential and don't have access um, to any of that information. Another resource um, that I want to highlight is the Student Learning Center, also known as tutoring. This is another one that I highly, highly recommend for students to use. It is completely free uh, for students to use. Again, we'll jump over to the website. And we have a Student Learning Center on campus. Um, it's in um, the Health and Sciences Building in an area that we call the Grove. Um, and so they have um, their hours listed here where you can go in. Um, they have computers available for students to use. Um, and there's a designated English, uh, English and Writing Center, and then a Math and Science Center um, as well. With tutors, it's available. Um, you can you know, you pop in any time that works in your schedule. They're open, you sign in, and then um, have tutoring available for lots and lots of different subjects. They also have online tutoring, which is um, a great resource. It has more um, varied hours than the um, on-campus site. And you can access that through Canvas, um, which again, I'll show you in a little bit how to log in there. Um, but you can log into Canvas and then again, it's completely free and you don't have to sign up ahead of time. You can just drop in, um, join the Canvas site and it'll drop you into a Zoom, um, a Zoom session with a tutor. So I'm not going to pull up all of these sites, um, but we do have um, also a library that's available for students. It was just remodeled over the last few years. So it's a beautiful building on campus. They have printing available. Um, they have um, you know, computers, um, librarians there that are available to help you if you're you know, doing a paper and need some references, things like that. They're more than willing to help, um, but that's a great resource. We have student leadership as well. Um, every year we have Running Start students that um, choose to get involved in student leadership. Um, they help plan a lot of the campus events um, and things throughout the year. It's a great opportunity. Um, a lot of times there's paid positions as well, which is great. Um, we've even had a Running Start student be the um, student body president in the past. So if that's something you're interested in, would definitely encourage that. Um, we have an Office of Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Community as well, which has, um, they oftentimes put on a lot of events on campus as well, um, and have an open kind of study space to welcome students. Um, so that's a great one to check out. And then another one I want to highlight um, is Disability Services. Um, so for any student that has a 504 or an IEP set up at your high school, um, those accommodations do not automatically roll over to the college. So it is your responsibility if you do need accommodations set up at the college that you reach out to the DS um, or Disability Services Office and get those accommodations set up. Um, hopefully, you know, many of you have already started this process. Sometimes it can take a bit of time, um, but you can either reach out by email directly to them or they have an intake form here um, on their website. Again, it'll kind of give you an overview of the different services and different, um, you know, different types of accommodations that can be provided. And then there's a new to DS page here that'll give you a little overview of the process. 
Um, the first step here is to complete this application of accommodations. It's an online form here. You fill out um, your you know, contact information, a little bit about the accommodations you're looking for, and then submit the form. And then from there, they'll schedule an access planning meeting. Um, that meeting is with the Director of Disability Services. Her name is Rachel Torella. Um, she is also in the same area, just down the hall from me. And um, you would meet one-on-one -on -one with Rachel to um, you know, bring your documentation, talk about what accommodations you need, and Rachel can help um, let you know what's available at the college level. Um, oftentimes, accommodations are different from the high school. Um, so just because you had something at the high school does not mean it's going to look exactly the same at the college level. Um, so just be aware of that. There's different laws and different requirements on what um, is available, but Rachel can help um, really give details on that and work that out um, for you in your individual classes. Now, I'd just like to talk a little bit about kind of faculty expectations within the classroom. And these are not hugely different from the high school. Hopefully they're very similar to what you've experienced. Um, but again, like to highlight, um, because it is you know, a little bit different being in a college environment, and I think um, it's good to go over and set those ex expectations early. Um, one of the expectations is that you are reading your syllabus. Um, I think from other orientations, I think most students probably have seen a syllabus or maybe used it a little bit in the high school. Um, but the syllabus is basically your contract um, between you and the instructor about what um, the expectations are, what the learning outcomes are, um, deadlines, grading information, all of that information that you really need um, to know to be successful in a class, that should be listed in the syllabus. Um, not every instructor is going to go through that with you. Sometimes it's just attached to the Canvas page and, you know, it's not something that they're going to sit and read with you. Um, but it is so important that you are reading through that and take time to really see what's in the syllabus, see what percentage you need for you know, whatever grade you're hoping for, um, how many assignments there are, what the due dates are. All of that stuff should be listed in the syllabus. Um, and if you have trouble finding the syllabus, please reach out to the instructor or reach out to me and I can try to help you find it in Canvas. But um, if you're, for, the, for whatever reason, not able to see that or there's information that you would, you know, is not in there that you're curious about, um, make sure to ask the faculty about that. It's also really important that you save your syllabus. So you want to um, download it if it's um, in Canvas or save a hard copy. Um, because that is going to be really important when you go to transfer um, to a university or another college down the line. Um, sometimes when it's time to transfer, if um, depending, sorry, a couple people adding. Um, <clears throat> so when it comes time to transfer, um, some classes are easier than others, but a lot of times the credentials office at a university will ask you to see the syllabus so they can see what's covered in the class and see if they have an equivalent um, to bring that class in. And it's very hard to go back a couple of years, you know, faculty leave, that might not be something that you can get after the course ends. Um, so make sure that you are saving that for all of your classes right now. Another thing is that um, instructors have varying teaching styles. So as you've probably experienced in high school, you may have a class with someone that you really like and fits well with your learning style. Um, other times you might not fit as well or have you know a hard time with the way that they're explaining things. Um, and that's just uh, kind of something that you have to learn to work with, adapt your style, communicate with the instructor. Um, but just know that not every class is going to you know, look exactly the same. Um, and you'll hopefully find that the instructors that you really like. And um, you know, hopefully, it's all, all a good experience. But just know that, um, especially at the college level, it's very individual. Um, to each instructor and um, just be try to be really communicative with that instructor about um, you know, what could help you in the class if they do something that is not clear um, to you or you have questions, you know, really um, take that initi initiative to reach out and, and make sure you're getting what you need as well. 
Um, I'm kind of skipping around here, but um, that goes along lines with contacting your instructor if you need to miss any class or if you need an extension. Again, this really comes down to communication. So if you know that you're going to be gone um, on a trip for a couple of days or you're going to miss this one class, Definitely reach out to the instructor, let them know that you're going to be gone, ask what you can do to make up the work or what's going to be um, covered during that class and show that you, um, you know, that you are invested in the class and that you're doing what you can to, um, you know, not, not miss that important work. Um, and then as far as requesting an extension, um, you'll find that some instructors are really willing to work with you and might be flexible. Others may not be as flexible with deadlines, so it's important that you are reaching out early to them. If you know you're going to be sick or not able to complete something, please, please reach out to them before the deadline has passed. It's much easier for them to give you a couple of extra days ahead of time than going back and asking for an extension on something that was due a couple weeks ago. Um, and then things that you can do, so attending class every day, even if it is online, mentioned that. Um, some instructors may be more, um, uh, more, uh, paying attention to attendance and, uh, more of a stickler on that. Others may not care as much, um, but showing that you are invested in the class, I think goes a long, long way with instructors, um, being on time to class, turning in your work on time, um, and this is something we'll talk about in a little bit as well, but the quarter goes at a very, very quick pace. Um, it's a 10 week quarter. And so basically we're taking a full year's worth of material um, from your high school you know, pace and squeezing that down into 10 weeks. So it goes very, very fast. And every single quarter I hear from students that, um, you know, you maybe miss one assignment thinking you can get to it. But by the time, um, you know, it snowballs pretty quickly, you've missed a couple of assignments and it can get out of hand really quickly. So um, just encourage everybody to Turn in your work on time. Try not to push off those um, deadlines because the, the rest of the class will move on very quickly. Um, and then if you find that you are falling behind in class, reaching out to the instructor and using their office hours. Um, every instructor needs to have office hours available. And sometimes it's in person. Sometimes it's on Zoom. Um, sometimes it's setting up individual appointments. But please do use those office hours. They're, um, there for you as students to get clarification on assignments, um, to, you know, if you're not understanding something about class and you want to go over something again, that's what they're there for to help you. And the instructor you know, wants to see you succeed in the class and um, should be able to kind of help you and give that extra feedback in those office hours. So, Kind of going along with some of those expectations, um, some of the challenges that we've heard from students um, come from very some of those similar things. So the challenges we've we've heard instructors having varying due dates, um, you know, especially for the students here that are taking multiple classes, um, you might find that all of your instructors have the same due date or the same exam date um, or you know, maybe they're all different and that is harder for you to organize. So everything's going to look a little bit different depending on what class you're in. Um, another challenge is that students are often nervous to ask for help or, again, unclear on those expectations, not sure where to find something in Canvas. Um, and then another challenge is just a lack of structure and time management. Um, for those first two, I feel like I've kind of touched on some of those things with the instructors that but I cannot um, emphasize it enough to reach out early if you have questions. Um, I know it can be a little bit nerve wracking to reach out to an instructor sometimes, um, but majority, the vast majority of our instructors at NORS are very, very kind and friendly, approachable and willing to help students. Um, so if you, uh, you know, are not sure where to find your assignment or you, um, I'm not sure what the expectation is of the assignment, or maybe you get something back and it, you know, you weren't clear on what, why you got that grade. The instructor is really the first person that you should be going to to ask those questions, try to get feedback from them. 
um, you know, I'll have students come and ask me and I am more than willing to help you try to find answers as well. But more than not, more often than not, I will refer you back to the instructor because I just don't have those details on what the expectations for the assignment was or, um, you know, where they put this assignment. So definitely go to the instructor first. Um, a lot of times email is the best way to reach out, but if they have in-person office hours or if you're going to an, on, an in-person class, excuse me, um, trying to talk with them before or after class briefly or asking them to set up a time um, is a really good way to get a hold of them and get a chance to talk with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then as far as the lack of structure and time management, um, I think that a lot of you will find that with Running Start, you do have more flexibility in your time, which is maybe a reason you chose to do Running Start in the first place. Um, but with that flexibility and with that um, autonomy, it really comes with more responsibility to manage your own schedule, to be checking in on the assignments in your class. Um, oftentimes, instructors um, we'll give you lectures during the time, but during the class time, but they might not even remind you that you have an upcoming assignment because they have put that in the syllabus, in Canvas, and it's up to you to kind of be managing those assignments. Um, so I would encourage you to, again, read the syllabus, write down assignments with, with whatever tool you use to keep track of things. If you don't have something um, that you've done in the past, you know, try using different tools, um, different calendars, whatever it is that's going to kind of hold you accountable. Um, and then really take the time in the beginning of the quarter. So on Monday, Tuesday of next week, spend a lot of time in Canvas and getting clear on um, that, um, that class platform, you know, really looking through and reading everything that's in there. And it could be a little bit overwhelming at times and there's a lot of material there, but they put that material there because you need to know it. And so spend some time, get to know how instructors are setting up their Canvas pages because they're going to look a little bit different. Um, and, you know, make sure that you're feeling comfortable about where to go to find what you need in the course. Okay. Um, I think we're going to Take, well, we've covered a lot of these things. And so I'm going to skip this slide for a second and come back to it. And I'm going to take a few minutes um, for a little break, get some water, stretch your legs for a second. Um, and during that time, I want you to kind of think about what you do to help manage your time. If you use a um, an agenda or your phone calendar reminders, like what have you used to be successful in the past? Um, and what you plan to use for your Running Start classes to help keep you organized and um, help manage your time a little bit. So we'll take a five minute break. Um, well, just under a five minute break. We'll come back in four minutes at 7.50. Um, we'll get started again. And um, when we come back, we'll just share some of those in the chat and then jump into the second half. We'll see you in about four minutes. Okay, hopefully everyone's coming back now. Jump back into the second half. I know it's a really long time listening to me. Um, so hopefully second half will go uh, quickly. Um, so if any of you have helpful um, tools that you've used or, um, you know, I've heard of some cool apps that people use to stay organized and track um, their time and their schoolwork, um, go ahead and pop those in the chat. You know, maybe other people are looking for ways to have better time management. And I like always learning about kind of new things that students are using. Uh, I see iPhone notes, that's a good one. Um, setting up reminders. Um, Canvas does have a calendar in there that you can sync all of your, um, it'll show all of your assignments for all the classes. So it's a good way to look ahead and see if you know, everything else 
everything is due on a certain day. Use a calendar in your room or a planner, a lot of planners. Um, yeah, I think whatever works well, you know, for you, try out different things if you are somebody who's not used, you know, organizational tools in the past. Um, I think coming to the college setting can sometimes be a big change. So, um, you know, being willing to try out a lot of different things is important. Letting someone know who nags you, that's perfect too. Having some accountability. If you have friends in the class, that's a great one. Your, you planner.com is a free Excel. That's great. Google Calendar. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for writing um, to-do lists. That's a huge one. I use that every day. Um, all right, so keep those in there. And like I said, if you're looking for tools to use, um, you'll maybe try out some of these ideas if it's not something you've done in the past. Let me go back a little bit here. Um, so just some of the um, tips and for time management that we've um, heard of and have found have worked well. Um, so making a schedule, as I mentioned, especially for those online classes where there's less accountability, there's not someone checking in on you, um, you know, really set that time out for yourself of when you will be logging into class. Um, and maybe find someone um, to help keep you accountable, make sure that you logged in at those times. Um, creating a specific specific list of things to do each day. Um, and part of that is breaking down big assignments. Um, so maybe you have a big test coming up or a big essay coming up, breaking that down on what can you get started with. Um, and then again, kind of jumping around, but celebrating those successes. If you get your checklist done or you've done a big part of the assignment, you know, take a break and do something else. Um, you know, watch a show, whatever it is that's fun for you, go celebrate that and then come back and keep working on that. Um, planning ahead, setting deadlines for yourself. Um, some classes, you know, kind of build that in for you and might have deadlines set up throughout the quarter. Others might just set bigger, bigger assignments and leave that up to you to kind of pace that out for yourself. So um, you know, figure out what's going to work in each class for yourself. Um, and then other things, concentrate on one thing at a time, you know, try to put your phone away or find a space that works really well for you. Um, you know, some people, it works really well to be in a quiet space with no distractions. Um, other people like coming to the library or the Grove where they have a little bit of distraction but can work on their assignments. So figure out what really works best for you. Um, and then probably the most important is ask for help when needed, um, whether that's using those resources that we talked about um, reaching out to the running start office or the instructor, or whatever it is, um, asking for help when it's needed and early um, is hugely important. And then um, I'd like to just include a little bit of information here about getting connected on campus. Um, I know this is a bigger issue kind of as we um, we're coming out of the pandemic and um, so we have more students on campus now. I think it's a little bit easier to get connected um, if you want to, but a couple of ways that you can see what's going on on campus. Um, we do send a weekly Running Start email. Um, that will go to your My Seattle College's email address, which I will um, show how to set that up later. Um, so be sure you're checking your email. That includes usually an event highlight, so something that's coming up. It also has a lot of important reminders and deadlines and things like that, so it's a good one to check. Um, we do have an Instagram that we try to put some events on there as well and kind of highlight other North events. Um, and we have a lot of events those first maybe two or three weeks of campus, especially in the fall quarter. Um, I just listed one here that's come out, but I know more are kind of going to be published in the next few weeks. Um, so again, just keep an eye on Instagram and in your email and we'll share those out when they actually come. So talked a little bit about um, you know, resources, getting started for the quarter. Um, so now kind of want to talk a little bit of, about what happens if you get into your class and things are not necessarily going as planned, or maybe you're finding it's a little bit more challenging than you had anticipated. Um, as I mentioned, the impact for Running Start students um, can be a lot bigger than maybe a regular college student. Um, you're taking a class that you traditionally would have taken for one year at the high school in a lot of cases. 
and you're condensing that down into a 10 week period. Um, so for example, those of you that are taking English 101, um, that would be a full year's credit. And you're gonna be doing that from September 23rd through the middle of December and getting that one year, um, one year's worth of credit. Grades are also um, going to be starting on your permanent college transcript. Um, and not only are they going on your college transcript, but they're also going to be going on your high school um, transcript and impacting your GPA there. So the one class that you're taking is going to essentially count twice. And there is not a way to get it removed from your transcript or, you know, if you don't need the class for graduation, um, you know, we don't, we have students that ask to get it removed from your college transcript. We can't do that. Um, with the class. So it's going to be on there forever, wherever you go after Norris, it'll be there. Um, so again, want to highlight seeking support early. Contacting the instructor is always the first step. Um, but if you have trouble getting a hold of the instructor or you're finding that you need additional support or have more questions, um, please reach out to me or Adriana, the Running Start Advisor. Um, reach out to our office and we can, you know, help troubleshoot with you if it's just, um, you know, you're needing another resource or more support. Um, if you need to talk about withdrawing or any other options, we can help walk you through that. Um, and your high school counselor is a good resource as well. Um, and so reaching out to either Running Start or high school counselor is a good option. Um, and then again, hi highlighting the student learning center um, or the tutoring center. So, um, I want to talk about the different deadlines and withdrawing from a class. So all of you, you know, now have your schedule, you're enrolled, hopefully in the classes you want to be. Um, but there are some key dates to be aware of throughout the quarter. Um, if you're finding that the class is either not a good fit or it's not going as well, it's not what you're expecting. Um, and sometimes things come up that are just outside of our control. Um, you know, if you get sick and miss a couple of weeks of class, that's going to have a much bigger impact on a running start class than it might on the high school. Um, because if you miss a couple weeks of the class, you're essentially missing, um, you know, maybe a month's worth of what would have been in the high school. So one, um, I guess the first date to be aware of is dropping without a W on your transcript. Um, the deadline for that is the um, 10th day of the quarter. So for fall quarter, that's going to be Friday, October 4th. So if you get into the class these first two weeks and you find that it's just not going to be a fit, you don't want to continue with the class, you have until the 10th day to drop the class and it comes completely off your transcript like you never took the class at all. If you stay in the class, you're doing your assignments um, and you get into the quarter and again, if something happens or you're just feeling like you're not going to pass the class for whatever reason, you actually have until the end of the eighth week of the quarter. And again, it's only a 10 week quarter. So you have almost the entire quarter, the end of the eighth week to withdraw from that course. That means that a W will go on your transcript, but it does not impact your GPA. That's a really um, important deadline to be aware of and a good thing to know um, that you have that kind of um, out if you need it all the way again until the eighth week of the quarter. Um, running Start students will often have a Running Start hold on their account, and that will prevent you from adding or dropping classes without permission. So if you do need to withdraw from a course, it's important that you reach out to the Running Start office. Um, you can just send us an email, make sure you include your first and last name and your student ID number, um, and just say that you need to withdraw from the class. Um, we could take that hold off and then give you instructions on how to drop the class. We can also help advise you with other grading options. So um, sometimes after withdraw deadline, there are other options such as getting a no credit or other things that um, the Running Start office can help give you details on if you find yourself in that situation. I also just wanna highlight the academic calendar here. And again, it has a link to our website um, because if you find yourself in the middle of the quarter and not knowing what your options are, one, you can reach out to the Running Start office, or you can come into the academic calendar, um, and it has all of the important dates that you would need to know as a student. Um, last day to withdraw with 50% refund. Um, it has holidays in here, the last day to drop without or to drop with a W, 
when the quarter ends, all of those important dates listed here. So I want to mention a little bit about the student progress policy. Um, so um, this is a policy for all students at North Seattle College. It's not specific to Running Start students. Um, but it's a, the expectation that all students are maintaining, maintaining <clears throat> excuse me, a 2.0 cumulative grade point average. If you, you know, have a rocky start or have a rocky quarter um, and things just aren't going as well, um, the first quarter that your cumulative GPA drops below a 2.0, you would be placed on academic alert. So it's basically just, um, just a warning you, we encourage you to meet with the Running Start office. We like to um, you know, have a meeting, connect you with other resources, talk about what some of the challenges are, um, and really just get you set on a better course for the future quarters. If your cumulative GPA um, were to be below a 2.0 for a second quarter in a row, um, then you would move down into academic probation. Um, you are still able to continue as a Running Start student. Um, on probation, but at this point, a hold would be placed on your account um, where you would need to meet with a Running Start advisor. You like to meet a little bit more regularly if you were on probation. Um, again, the goal is to just um, to give, the, give you the support that you need, make sure that you're able to make some changes and turn that around. Um, because as, um, as you can see here, the third quarter that you have a cumulative GPA below a 2.0, you would be placed on academic suspension and not able to continue at North for four quarters. Um, obviously, as a running start student, that has a pretty big impact in terms of um, um, meeting high school graduation requirements and um, staying on track for graduation. So that's why we have these earlier stages to just uh, make sure that we're touching base and that you're um, feeling successful early on. I'd like to go over this process just because every student needs to be aware um, of what the expectations are. Um, but I do wanna highlight that overall Running Start students do very well in classes. Um, and so it's not meant to scare anyone, but just uh, let you know what the process is and kind of what, um, what that looks like if you find yourself in this situation. All right, so we are getting to the last section here of the orientation. So bear with me a little bit longer. Um, and now I want to talk about some of the online services and the different things that you'll um, need to log into and use as a student at North. So we've already talked about CPC Link. This is one you've already been in. We've um, used this one for class schedule, grades, um, again, contact information, registering for classes. All of that's done in CPC Link, um, sort of the administrative side of things. Um, and as I've mentioned a lot, Canvas is where you will spend a lot of the actual time um, during the quarter in your class. So there is a link here, but I also want to show you how to access Canvas from the website. So we'll go back here, um, back to the main North Seattle page, and then again to the Students tab. And you'll find this um, Canvas link here. Once it loads, um, you'll click on this uh, big red click here to log into Canvas button. And you'll log in with your CTC link information. So the same exact login um, as CTC link. And for me, it's gonna make, make it a text in just a second. Once you're logged into Canvas, um, like I said, there's a lot of information on here and yours will look slightly different than mine because um, I am not a student. And so it has some announcements up here. Again, these are just general student announcements, um, but really important things to, to do and be aware of. So you wanna read through those, those will change throughout the quarter. You have your dashboard down here. Um, again, mine are gonna have some different um, tiles here, but this is where you'll, um, you should have a tile for tutoring, I believe, or the Student Learning Center. Um, 
are some other ones that all students will have, but then you'll also see tiles for your individual classes here. You can also access those along the left-hand side under the courses um, button here. So I will just use one of these as an example, but you'll um, see your classes here eventually. Um, want to point out that you should not panic if you log into Canvas right now and do not see your classes. Um, it's pretty common for classes not to be added until the first day, maybe the day before the quarter or even the first day. Um, so you can, you're welcome to log in. Don't panic if there's nothing there. Um, just log back in on the 23rd. And then um, if you're still not seeing your classes at that point, then you can reach out um, either to me or to the e-learning office to get um, to get access to that. But once you do have access, you'll see your class listed. And again, every class is going to be um, structured slightly different based on how the instructor sets it up. So I really would encourage spending some time that first day and, you know, um, clicking through all the different links, reading the information, and getting familiar with where things are in your Canvas. Um, but generally speaking, you'll have a home page, an announcement page where, um, you know, the instructor can send uh, reminders, they can, you know, post announcements, whatever it is, post syllabus, all of that um, is often done here. Um, a lot of times there's different modules here, and most classes will um, have a weekly module set up that will open week by week. So, um, Usually you're not able to jump ahead in a class. I've heard some classes you can, so maybe if an instructor sets it up that way, but majority of your classes are gonna go week by week and have certain um, you know, assignments and deadlines that open up as you go. Um, let's see, a couple other things that will likely be on there. So a lot of times you have um, an assignments tab as well. This is where you'll, um, not only see assignments, but you'll also be able to see the grades that you're getting back for classes. Um, you will not be able to see final grades in Canvas. This is just where you'll see individual assignment grades. Um, and then you'll check your final grade, which is often different from Canvas um, in CTC Link. But this is where you can check um, grades or quizzes for you know, specific assignments here. Um, there is, again, student learning um, or tutoring center. I think I'm denied because I'm not a student, but hopefully you have access in there. Um, so spend some time poking around in Canvas. Um, another piece over here that you want to look at is the calendar. They mentioned this is a good spot to um, see all of your assignments for all of the classes that you're enrolled in. Um, so those should be listed here. You can scroll through the whole quarter and Yours will hopefully have more information on there um, with discussions and exams, things like that. Um, and then finally, there is an inbox here um, along the left-hand side. And this is um, usually the way instructors will like to um, receive communications. Again, that'll vary based on the instructor and the syllabus should tell you what their preferred way of um, communicating is. But this is an easy way to use um, the Canvas email to reach out to your instructors, send, um, send notes and questions, things like that. And instructors can reach out to you this way. So make sure that you're checking your inbox here because they um, you know, might be reaching out about a certain assignment or that you're you know, have missed class, whatever it is. Um, so make sure you're checking here regularly. Um, let's see. I think that's all that we need in Canvas right now. Another um, piece just to highlight is the people pages here. Um, this is basically the directory for any staff or faculty member. So um, especially for those of you that are on a wait list, you're not going to have access to Canvas um, as a waitlisted student. And so if you need to get a hold of your instructor to ask to be um, admitted, or if you're trying to switch classes and need to email an instructor, um, you can use this people pages um, and then just search uh, their name. All right, another tool that you will use um, is your My Seattle Colleges login. Um, a few of you probably have already 
seen your email address or activated this. Um, <clears throat> but if you have not already done so, this is something you want to do um, between now and those first couple of days of the quarter. Um, every student is automatically given a My Seattle Colleges login once you are um, once you apply and are registered. Um, and this gives you access not only to your student email, um, but also Wi-Fi on campus, um, using the computers in the library and in the computer lab, printing on campus, things like that. Um, and there is a link here to the My Seattle Colleges step-by-step -step instructions. Um, it walks you through setting up your account pretty, um, pretty detailed, um, so you can use this link can also, from the student's homepage here, click on the My Seattle Colleges login tool. Um, it's an easy link to get there. And then you can just set the cre uh, click the create or reset my password. Um, and this will give you your login information and allow you to set up your password. Um, another um, kind of tool that you will probably use during your time um, at North is Starfish. Um, Starfish primarily is used as a tool to schedule uh, meetings with um, advisors, so with the Running Start staff, but, but it's also used to reach out to um, other people called in your network, so instructors have contact information there, um, referrals to other offices on campus, things like that are all done in Starfish. Um, we can also use it to do education planning. So those of you that are planning to um, complete an associate's degree or transfer classes, um, we use that for planning purposes. Um, you will need to use your My Seattle Colleges login um, to log into Starfish. Um, and there's a bunch of links here about how to use Starfish. It's fairly straightforward. Once you get your login, um, you can um, then log into Starfish. The My Calendar, um, it's a great way and much, much quicker than emailing me back and forth to figure out when I'm free and when you're free. Um, you know, if you if it's the weekend and I'm not working, you can just log into Starfish, see my next appointment and book yourself there. It's a much um, smoother process that way. Okay, um, so now I'd just like to go over a few students. Um, a few kind of policy pieces um, of your student rights and responsibilities. Um, again, these are not hugely different from the high school um, as far as expectations go of students. <clears throat> um, the first one here is the Family Educational Right to Privacy Act. Um, this one is actually a big change from the high school. Um, the acronym, acronym is FERPA. Um, and basically that means that as a college student, even if you're under the age of 18, now that you're enrolled in college, um, me and any staff at North cannot um, disclose any information about you or about your classes, your grades, anything without your written permission. Um, a lot of you did fill out a permission form during the application process and you know, gave us permission to either talk with a parent or a sibling or anyone. Um, so if we have that written permission, then we can share information. But without that, we um, you know, are not able to give out anything. Um, even if we do have permission to share information, um, sometimes our information is more limited than maybe um, an instructor or a counselor at the high school. Um, so I'm not able to see when you've attended classes for the most part. <laughs> um, I can't log in and see what your grades are until the end of the quarter. Um, so there are just as limited information that I can share anyway, because I don't have access, um, but signing that FERPA release does give me permission to share what I know. Um, there are links here um, to all of these policies with more information, but in particular the um, zero tolerance for discrimination and harassment. Um, and basically it's pretty straightforward that there is um, no tolerance at North Seattle for any kind of discrimination, harassment, and that is whether you are on campus in an online environment, um, anything relating to North, that expectation that everyone feels welcome and feel safe um, as, as part of the North community. Um, as far as student conduct um, expectations, I think these are um, pretty, uh, pretty similar to what would be expected in a high school class in terms of um, you know, respecting others, 
you as a Running Start student, you know, have the unique uh, spot of having your classes paid for, but other students are here. They're paying a lot of money to be in these classes. They're working, um, you know, towards degrees or classes for jobs. Um, so just it's important to be aware of that, that everyone is really choosing to be in this class and um, to respect that, respect, um, you know, their space and the rights of others that are there with you. Thank you for that. Um, and then the piece that comes up most frequently for really any student, but particularly running start is um, plagiarism. That's where we see kind of the student conduct um, piece come up the most. Oftentimes it is unintentional plagiarism. Um, so just make sure that you are citing your sources um, and being responsible in that way. Um, if you have any questions about you know, using your own work, or if you're referencing something and don't know how to do that properly, make sure you're working with the instructor, asking those questions, or um, you know, working with the librarian, things like that, to make sure that you don't um, intentionally or unintentionally plagiarize. That tends to be the only issue we see there. Um, last piece here about um, is talking about safety and security on campus. Um, we do have a security team that is on campus um, 365 days a year, all day, all night. Um, and so no matter what time you're on campus, I know we have some evening classes um, or if you're here in the day, if you need anything, um, feel free to reach out to the campus security. I'd encourage you to put their phone number. Um, it's on the slide here. Put it in your phone so you have it in case you need them. Um, they can help with anything from um, you know, a concern on campus, or if you, um, you have a dead car battery and need help there, if you want an escort across campus in the dark, anything like that, they're very, very willing to help. Um, another piece of safety and security is just highlighting that we are an open campus at North. And so um, we're right across the street from, or across the freeway from the light rail. You know, people come and walk through campus all the time. Um, so make sure if you're studying or if you're on campus, for any reason that you're keeping your valuables with you. Um, you know, there's plenty of times we walk into the Grove and see a laptop just sitting there because someone's run to the bathroom. Make sure to take things with you or have someone watch them because um, we just really don't want to see your valuables taken for any reason. And overall, it's a very, very safe campus. I always feel very safe there. Um, but again, if you don't know everyone that's on campus and just make sure you're looking out for your safety and the safety of your thing. This last bullet point here um, is for the NSC alerts. Um, if you, um, again, after this meeting, follow this link and sign up for the alerts, this is where you'll find out if um, you know anything is happening on campus. If we have a snow day or um, classes are canceled for whatever reason, things that impact the campus, um, this is a good way to get that information sent directly to your email or your phone. All right, we have made it almost to the end here. Um, so thank you everyone for sticking um, through this long presentation. Just wanna highlight a few next steps and kind of ways to get a hold of me in the next few days. <clears throat> um, so as far as next steps, as I mentioned, many of you will either have or will have a Running Start hold on your account. That goes on all Running Start students and it's normal for it to be there. Um, so if you are happy with your classes, you don't need to make any changes. Um, it's fine to leave that hold on there. That hold will stay there until it's time to register for your next quarter. At that point, you'll need to turn in a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a new enrollment verification form. That's the form that your high school counselor signs, and every Running Start student needs to turn that in every single quarter. Um, so you'll get a new EVS. You'll <clears throat> excuse me, you'll return that to the Running Start office, and then that's how you take off your hold, and you're able to register then. Um, for the next quarter. But until that point, leave that hold on there and it's fine. Um, as a reminder, just um, log into CT C-Link after um, today and the next two days, check your class schedule and check your class fees and make sure that those have been paid. Um, and just a reminder that whenever you reach out to uh, any North Seattle staff, um, but especially the Running Start Office, include your, running, or include your name and CT C-Link ID number makes it much faster for me to respond to you um, if I have all that information there in the email. 
And then I have some dates and times listed here of um, when our upcoming drop-in hours are. Um, throughout the quarter, I usually um, operate on an appointment only basis. So using Starfish usually is the best way to get a meeting with me um, that or calling or emailing. Um, but during these first few days, because it's busy, we know there's a lot going on, I will be available just first come first serve, no appointment needed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so on Monday, I will be available in person, 8 to 5, and then we'll have virtual drop-in sessions from 12 to 1.30, where I'll just be on Zoom, and you can join if you have any questions. Um, I'll have the same hours on Tuesday, and then um, just in-person drop-in for Wednesday. Um, the uh, Zoom drop-in link will be posted to the website. I'll also include all of that when the presentation gets emailed out later this week. Um, so just make sure you're checking your email. You should be able to find the drop-in links there. And lastly, just want to uh, put the email up here for the Reading Start office. Um, hopefully you should have communicated already and gotten the email today for orientation. But if you have any questions that come up over the next few weeks or during your time as a Running Start student, please, please reach out and let me know. Um, that's what you know, me and Adriana are here to help you and make sure that you're successful as a student. Um, and then the last request is just to um, please complete the orientation survey. It should just take you know, maybe two minutes to complete, um, so we'd love to get your feedback there. Um, the link for the survey will also be included um, in the email, so if you don't have a chance to uh, do it right now or pull up the QR code that will be available later. And sorry, just have a few more people joining back in. And oops, I thought I had a question slide. I'll leave, leave this up. Oops. Sorry, my computer is slowing down at the end of the night. I'll leave this up, but now um, I will stop the recording. I want to thank everyone for joining. Um, again, if you have everything you need from this meeting, you're welcome to leave um, and just best of luck with starting the quarter. Um, but I will stick around and answer any questions as well. So let me stop the recording and we'll jump into questions.